we finish with the contract signing, which admittedly was not nearly as interesting as you would have hoped, just like pretty much all contract signings nowadays. I think the only contract signings that I ever really think anymore are going to be interesting are ones involving Brock Lesnar. Yeah, really. Because uh, he, he's just got that way of really carrying himself and making things have that like big fight feel. I will give credit to The Shield. They, they seem to try to put an interesting spin on this because while Seth Rollins is talking and pretty much going over how, you know, what Triple H said earlier in the night, you know, that's just blowing smoke and the shield is never going to back down and they are going to, you know, conquer evolution at payback. You know, Roman Reigns is disposing of the chairs, of the tables, and uh, Seth Rollins pretty much came out and said, you know, that uh, he's doing this because who are we trying to fool? You know, let's uh, let's not kid around. This isn't going to be a contract sign. This is going to be a fight. So, uh, yeah, even Dean Ambrose throws a chair and just in his own Dean Ambrose way, it's just so good. Uh, so they clear the ring, and then Evolution comes out, and uh, Triple H has some very pointed words for uh, for the Shield, Ashton. Yeah, Triple H comes out, and uh, he wants everyone to be aware of what they're witnessing. This is the last time that we will see the Shield ever on Raw. He says that it's a real shame because they could have had it all, and then he starts talking about how he, re- he remembers being there when the Shield signed their contracts to become part of the WWE, and Triple H said that they were going to be uh, revolutionary, and then he said that now how ironic is it that he's standing here and he's watching the ink dry on the contract. It's going to see them get knocked out of the WWE. They're going to be nothing but a statistic, and then Reigns hushes him with an interruption. Yeah, pretty much says, now get on in here and fight. And uh, crowd pops for that. Uh, Evolution gets on the apron. They tease that they're, you know, going to live to fight another day, which which would have been uh, smart. I guess it would, it would have been consistent with them. But no, they actually do get in the ring, and we do get a fight between these two teams, which at first it's looking like it's going great for the Shield. You know, they're clean in house. They've dumped both Triple H and Orton on the outside. Rollins does his uh, I, 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 over the ropes kind of dive onto Orton and Triple H. Ambrose looks like he's going to do a suicide dive, but he gets caught with a Batista clothesline. But then Batista turns around, and he gets hit with a Superman punch. And uh, it just really starts breaking down from there, Ashton. Yeah, it really starts breaking down there. But at the end of the day, to me, the interesting part is how this segment ended. Um, I've been saying it's going to happen for a long time, and it finally happened tonight. Evolution with the triple power bomb on Reigns on the announcer table. Yeah. You know what? It, it's so funny because I don't know if you said this on uh, Twitter well, or if you said this to me personally or both, but I remember you saying how you could very easily see uh, a scenario at Payback where all three members of Evolution are staring down Roman Reigns and Roman Reigns has to fight from the ground up to give the Shield any kind of a fighting chance. And that was kind of the scene here uh, because, you know, they laid uh, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose out, you know, Orton, Batista, and Triple H. Uh, Triple H had already scored one blow to Roman Reigns with the sledgehammer to the gut. And then he made sure to dole uh, shots out with the hammer to both Rollins and Ambrose to really just neutralize them. And um, once that was taken care of, he nails another shot to Reigns as he's trying to get up with the ropes. I mean, they are doing so well, in my opinion, of making Reigns that babyface that just has that resolve, that un- that unbreakable will to win. And I really hope it doesn't get cheesy and, and get caricaturized, you know, get the Cena treatment, so to speak, uh, because he should always... Oh, it's going to. And, and I fear it will, too, dude. And I think you've been right on the money when you and I talk about what makes babyfaces and what makes heels and what, you know, makes people sour on babyfaces. And the one consistent soundbite that I have loved from you that you've attributed to Cena is the day you start winning without crowd support is the day that they're going to turn on you because they realize, well, he doesn't need us anymore, so screw him. And I would hate to see Reigns get to that point because, dude, when he was even holding the microphone before he even spoke, they popped big for him. Yes, they did. So, you know, there's definitely something there, and you can tell that WWE's endeavor to make uh, Roman Reigns the guy how I'm going to use another line from you that I absolutely loved – 
rip the torch from Cena's hand while it's still burning is going well. I just hope they don't screw it up because the last thing, even though Roman Reigns could very easily do it if you just look at him for like five seconds, is uh, is become OP because I really liked how they booked him here. How is he not OP already? You know, I've wondered that, but I mean, at the end of the day, even there there are circumstances that even Roman Reigns can't overcome, like when they lost to the Wyatt family, uh, both at Chamber and then at the Raw because of Evolution. Uh, the contract signing here. So, you know, when the odds seem a bit too overwhelming, it's nice to see that even Roman Reigns can overcome them. But I do agree, he's had some very OP moments for sure. Yeah, but still, this was a good moment of vulnerability for Roman Reigns. Absolutely. All right, Absolutely. so that's how we go off the air, actually, with the evolu- with Evolution standing, hovering over the Shield's lifeless bodies. Yeah, uh, anything else you want to say about this, Roy? Should we go into our next segment? Go. High spots and low shots. And I'm going to make this real simple for everybody. My low shot is Brad Maddox. Ah, good choice. Gets the bejesus beat out of him by Kane, even though it was only two maneuvers. They were two devastating maneuvers. And then uh, if it wasn't enough for him to be devastated physically... He's also been devastated emotionally by learning that he has lost his job. Welcome to the new economy, Maddox. Uh, well, we hope to see you either back in a referee role or maybe even as a competitor. Who knows? I just uh, would totally miss out on that awkwardness if it was, it was off my TV. So let's hope WWE finds him something new to do. Absolutely. My low shot is something that I'm going to say once, and we're never going to act as if it happened ever again. Damian Sandow. Enough said. I mean, it it was awful. So, yeah. Uh, My high spot, this is a bit more difficult. But you know what? Because I can, my high spot is Emma. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, because you know why? Even though she got beat down after the match and she didn't look like a winner, she beat the number one contender for the Divas Championship. Clean one, two, three. No Santino at ringside. No shenanigans. It was the first time in a long time that Emma actually really felt like Emma. And for this Emma mark, that's what's best for business. Triple H voice not included. So who's your high spot? The entire authority. Great choice. They have every advantage in the world going into payback. Stephanie McMahon has Daniel Bryan by the balls in about as close to a literal sense as you can get without her literally having her hand on his testicles. She also has Kane in her back pocket. They just got rid of the only thing separating them from being in 100% control of Raw. Daniel Bryan is in a very precarious position where he's either going to be able to not defend the title for so long that he has to give it up, or just be forced to give it up beforehand. Um, Triple H got the upper hand tonight over Evolution, and if you want to include the other Evolution guys, they dominated a tag team match against recently former tag team champions. So the Authority had the best night tonight, bar none. As much as I I love that you picked Emma, I got to say, the Authority night tonight was just so much better. Oh, well, I mean, let's make it perfectly clear, my man. I mean, Emma, when she got her hand playing poker, I mean, she laid down one pair. The authority laid down a royal freaking flush tonight. I mean, there's no question. I mean, they cleaned house tonight. So, to me, if we were really thinking about who had the best night overall, the authority was a clean sweep. So, excellent choice by you. Dare I say the perfect choice. I'll take it. Yeah, so segue into our next segment. Go. Raw request. Um, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. My raw request, e- even though there are little things that bug me about it, keep doing what you're doing with the United States Championship. I like that Sheamus and Cesaro are in a very physical feud, that Sheamus is the champion because already he's making his second defense uh, at Payback. And you know what? It, it does bother me how he overcomes and what a douche he is and this and that. But you know what? I can't lie. He's definitely made, him and Cesaro together have definitely made 
the United States Championship interesting, and I'm very much looking forward to their match at Payback. So whoever the champion is, keep the mid-card strong like this, because it makes for compelling TV. And that's my Raw request. All right! My Raw request is that the WWE gets their priorities straight. You don't have guys like Damian Sandow job clean to Adam Rose and frickin' Drew McIntyre job mostly clean to Torito. And then you go and have frickin' Eva Marie pick up a win. Just seriously, WWE, get your cards lined up straight. Get your priorities right and stop pushing the wrong frickin' people. Uh, you know, <laughs> I sign on to that wholeheartedly. I don't even know how I'm going to expunge the memory of Eva Marie beating Summer Rae one, two, three in that ring. I, what memory? I, I just, what memory are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, see, you you need to teach me your technique because it it, it is just deeply rooted in there. Like uh, my nightmares are gonna be made of this stuff. So thanks made of what to me. stuff, John? You're speaking in tongues. <sighs> And I envy you right now. But yeah, thanks, WWE. Suck a fat one for that. And Damian Sandow, I've talked to death, so I'll just leave it by saying what I already did. I, I totally co-sign on to your Raw request. Awesome. We had a lot of fun talking about this. Let's go home, brother. All right, this has been Raw. This has been TwitWow, the best wrestling podcast made for wrestling fans by wrestling fans on the web today i'm john that was my cohort and commentary ashton guys be sure to rate and review on ashton's youtube channel eon Izzle, because that is where this is now uploaded comment on tweet off and do you know what's coming do you nxt takeover live reactions be there. It's going to be epic as we see Tyler Breeze wrestle Sami Zayn for the number one contendership for the NXT Championship and oh, so much more. We hope you will join us. Peace.